What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I'm the Malta Activist, and thank you for still being here. Yes, I'm back after a brief hiatus. I needed to take some time off and sort of recalibrate and you know uh, and figure out what I want to do in life and 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 assess my assess my goals in life. And I'm glad to report that one of my goals is to make whiskey videos on YouTube. So we're back, and we're back with a bang because I have here with me a whiskey that has. Wow, captured everyone's imagination suddenly out of the blue. Uh, I'm talking about this, ooh, M&H Elements, the Sherry Cask. That's right, this one won every award at the World Whiskey Awards this year. It was the best whiskey of the year. Now, is it really the best whiskey of the year? Is it just hype? I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, we're gonna find out in 10 minutes, so stick around. Before we get into the review, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to my returning viewers, my returning subscribers, uh, everybody who makes this channel uh, you know, possible. Thank you so much for everything that you do. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, to the Patreon guys, to the YouTube members, you guys are amazing. And uh, by the way, if it's, if it's your first time, that means, you know what, you clicked on that thumbnail. That means something interested you. And if whiskey is your jam, then this channel is, is really the one for you, honestly. You know, um, unfiltered, unashamed, uh, unadulterated, honest, brutal reviews and whiskey talk on this channel that I will promise you. So if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, maybe share, maybe like, maybe comment, do some of those things or do none of those things. I don't really care. I'm just glad that you're here. Okay, on to the review. Alrighty then, so I'm holding in my hand this brand new, well, it's not brand new, um, brand new to me maybe, the M&H, M&H Wood Distillery uh, Sherry Cost Whiskey. This is called the Elements. They have, uh, they have two other in this, uh, in this range, which actually, you know what? I should have brought out. I'm sitting here with just the one bottle. They have two others. Um, uh, so let me pull those out, okay? Uh, don't go away. Here you go. Thanks to the magic of cinema, I am back like as if I was never away. So uh, I have with me two other MNH Elements bottles. This one is the red wine cask. There you go. Check that out. And this one here is the peated. Now, before we get to the one that actually won the World Whiskey Awards in uh, this year, uh, let's talk about the peated one. It says this whiskey was aged in the finest X bourbon and X Isla casks. Okay, interesting. Giving it a lightly peated flavor with distinct notes of fresh tropical fruits matured under the Tel Aviv sun. Yes, this whiskey is from Israel. Now we have here, ooh, the red wine cask. Okay, what does this say? This whiskey was aged in the finest X bourbon and Israeli red wine cask, giving it fruity flavors, rich aromas, bloody bloody blah. blah, blah. No natural color, blah, 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 under the Tel Aviv sun. Cool. Okay, so uh, ex bourbon and Israeli red wine cask maturation on this one. However, the one that we're talking about today is this. This is the sherry cask, it says, and it won best whiskey of the year or competition or whatever you want to call it at the World Whiskey Awards this year, and everybody went in a tizzy. And I was like, what? I, I got inundated with messages from my friends saying, dude, have you tried this? Have you tried this? Have you reviewed this? What's going on? What's going on? And here's the answer. Okay. So last year, was it last year? Maybe a year before last, um, during the lockdown, we got contacted by uh, m &H, which is Milk and Honey, by the way, Milk and Honey Distillery, in uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, uh, to conduct a, a Zoom tasting for our uh, whiskey club. And so that's where we came across these three whiskeys and we tasted them. And I remember thinking at the time, hey, not bad, you know, um, new distillery in the Middle East. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and now, uh, you know, they're coming out with what I thought was very, very decent drams. Um, I wasn't particularly blown away, but I was certainly intrigued. And then sort of, you know, we had them on the shelf and they were there and it was, yeah, fine, well done, good job. Uh, let's get back together again in a couple of years and see what you have. And then 
uh, a week, 10 days ago, something like that, uh, I get news that one of the whiskeys that we tried a couple of years ago, well, it won the World Whiskey Award 2023. Now, if you know me, you know I don't really care about awards and, and uh, you know, stuff like that. It really doesn't matter to me. If the whiskey is good, it's good. If it's not, eh, who cares? Uh, but this one won and then I was like, oh really? I've drunk this whiskey. I never thought, oh my god, this whiskey should win something. But then I was like, yeah, maybe that was like two years ago. I don't know what happened. So I said, you know what? Let me go back. Let me go back, bring this out and see what the fuss is all about. So I have here in my hand this uh, Elements Sherry Cask from uh, Milk and Honey Distillery in Tel Aviv, Israel. And it says, this single malt whiskey was aged in the finest ex-bourbon, PX, and Olorosa Sherry Cask, giving it a rich texture, bloody bloody blah, deep flavors, matured under the Tel Aviv sun. Okay, so three cask maturations in here, ex-bourbon, PX, and Oloroso. Okay, and there's some literature on their website that says, hey, we went to Spain, we found the finest bodega and we got the casks from them and you know, the whole marketing spiel, I get it. I get it, these are good, these are good casks, okay? What do we know about m &H? Well, from what I know, it, uh, I think it was established 2012. They started working on it in 2014 or constructing it. And then finally in 2015, they started, um, they started filling barrels. And so there technically should be some seven year old whiskey lying around somewhere. This one is of course a non age statement whiskey, but I'm gonna guess maybe four years, three, four, four and a half years, which is, which is what most new whiskeys or even single malt whiskeys are managing to do, you know, uh, come up with whiskeys that are very decent at, uh, and at quite a young age, at the four, four and a half, five year mark. And, you know, I think one of the advantages they have is that where they're uh, maturing this, it's, it's fairly hot, you know, it, like 10 months of the year, it's quite sunny, it's, um, it's quite hot, temperatures are high. Uh, so, you know, faster maturation, it's very similar to bourbons or uh, Indian whiskeys, uh, you know, uh, and I think sort of um, uh, M&H sort of uh, benefit from the weather that they're able to, uh, and so they're able to mature their whiskeys faster. Anyway, whew, that was a mouthful. Okay, what do we know about this particular whiskey? All right, so this is bottled at 46% ABV. Thank you, good job. It's non-chill filtered, excellent. It's natural color, excellent. Like we mentioned, it's ex-bourbon, PX, and Oloroso casks, and uh, just a varying of all three, and then bottled in this, yeah, I think rather, I, I don't like the packaging so much. It's a bit plain for me. I mean, it's not bad. I like the logo, that bull is cool. I don't know what the bull means, to be honest. But that bull is cool. Um, what else? Well, you know, it, the packaging, I mean, of course packaging matters, but in this case, ah, let's, let's talk about the spirit. Let's talk about the spirit. There you go. You can have a look at that. That's natural color. Nobody's messed with this. You know, this is what it's supposed to look like. It's uh, it's non-chill filtered. Thank you, well done. So doing all the good things, ticking all the right boxes for me, as far as, you know, um, producing whiskey with integrity is concerned. I appreciate that to no end. So good job, m &H. well done. I appreciate that aspect of it. But now let's uh, let's get on with the whiskey, man. Yes, this is a good nose. I am super, super sensitive to sulfur, so that's the first thing I look for when, when I hear sherry cost, but this one has zero off notes, absolute zero off notes. It's still very bourbon forward, even though it says sherry cask, I feel that was, that must have been a super active, super strong bourbon barrel that they used in the recipe because that's coming out a lot more strongly than the sherry casks for me, even though there's two sherry casks in play, PX and uh, Oloroso. I don't know the breakdown in terms of the ratios, um, but I feel it's a bit uh, bourbon forward with an underlying hint of what sh the, the sherry casks have to offer. So, what do I get on the nose? Um, it's very sweet, it's quite fruity. I get lots of red berries and plums. 
ripe bananas. It's quite malty as well with maybe just a touch of oak right at the end. Look, it's a great nose. It's, um, it's not a holy shit, what the hell is going on nose, but it is quite nice, very, very decent. And you know what, in, in this day and age, if I don't find an off note, then you know what, that's a win in my book. Yeah, man, reminds me of a really, really well-constructed Speyside whiskey, you know? I'd be hard pressed to um, differentiate this from a good scotch, a good space side dram. Man, I like the nose. I really do like the nose. Yeah, it gets fruitier over time. Uh, in, in fact, even more sweeter over time. Okay, I like this. Let's uh, let's do this, man. Chin chin chin. chin. Wow, okay. Before I get into my opinion, let's do the tasting notes. Um, medium, medium, uh, medium bodied, I would have liked for it to be fuller. Mild spices in there, um, some dried fruits, uh, there's some pepper, maybe hints of chocolate, cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla. Yeah, and maybe those, those berries, uh, red berries are drier now a little bit, right? Hmm, okay. Okay, so fairly disappointing on the palate for me. Kind of all over the place. I wish, uh, I wish it had better viscosity. It's non-chill filtered, so I don't know why. It's, um, it's so medium, medium to thin bodied. Uh, I, I, I was hoping that it was creamier. The nose certainly because of the sweetness made me think that I would get a more creamier whiskey, but it's not, um, it's, I wish it was fruit forward the way it was on the nose, but the fruits are super subdued. It's way more savory. Um, in fact, there's a char element to it, which kind of overrides the, um, the, the nuanced flavors, if you like, which I would have, I would have preferred for those flavors to pop out, but they don't. It's pretty underwhelming on the palate. I love the nose. The palate is quite underwhelming. Uh, it's it's kind of out of balance for me. It doesn't work so well. Um, yeah. Ew. No, not ew. That's wrong. That's wrong. I, I didn't say ew. I meant, huh? Yeah, man. So I'm just a little confused right now because I remember drinking this a couple of years ago and thinking, hey, that's not a bad whiskey. But I think it was with a grain of salt because I was like, hey, you know, new whiskey distillery, well done. You know, uh, out of the Middle East, fantastic. Um, non chill filtered, no coloring added, you know, um, bottling it at 46%, following all the right things. And, you know, um, uh, they they uh, they consulted with the late great Jim Swan, right? Uh, God rest his soul, uh, who was um, it, just one of one of the most influential um, whiskey personalities or, or, or whiskey figures in the industry uh, in the last twenty years. You know, he's behind Penderin, he's behind um, uh, Cavalan, uh, and so many other distilleries, uh, including M and H. Uh, and so you know his. His his uh, his fingerprints are uh, you you'll find them in so many places and I have an immense respect for Jim Swan and what he's done for the whiskey industry and so when I found out that these guys had consulted with him I was like hey you know you're doing the right things and you're doing them the right way uh, so yeah so when I drank the whiskey at that time I was like hey man that's not so bad it's okay um, I think it's quite decent I like it but now today. Under you know under the shadow of winning the World Whiskey Award for Best Whiskey 2023, the question is, hmm, 
does this deserve that title? And the short answer is no, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a decent whiskey by all means, but a winner at the World Whiskey Awards? Uh, if I was a judge, I nah, I wouldn't think so. Um, in fact, now on a, you know, a few successive sips, I'm getting, it, it, I feel that it's slightly over oaked as well, which is weird given that it's a, it should be a very young whiskey. So if it's over oaked, then maybe the conditions were too harsh. I don't know, I don't wanna speculate. I'm just reporting it as I see it. So yeah, man. But listen, listen, you know, don't, don't take my word for it. You know, I, these are still quite, I think they're uh, fairly easily accessible. I looked them up online. Uh, they're available for about 50-ish pounds, slightly on the higher side, in my opinion, for, uh, you know, for a non-statement whiskey from, you know, from the Middle East. Uh, they really should be pricing this so that it gets into the hands of as many people so that people can try it. And I think maybe 50 pounds is the deterrent, uh, but you know, who knows? Um, I, I, I don't understand pricing strategies. So, does this whiskey deserve <laughs> to win the World Whiskey Awards Best Whiskey of the Year 2023? My answer is no. Is it a decent dram? Sure. You know, is it, is it, a, is it a curious dram? Yes, of course. You know, a whiskey from Israel? Of course. That's, you know, everybody's like, holy shit, that's, that's super intriguing. Let me go try it. And so there's definitely an intrigue element to this uh, brand, which I think everybody should try. Uh, you know, they're doing a bunch of stuff. They have the red wine cask, like we said. We have the peated one here, which I will also try shortly. Um, so you know, uh, there's a bunch of bunch of flavor profiles for you to uh, navigate and see which one you like. Uh, I think they make for an interesting purchase, um, but. You know, if you sit down with your bunch of friends and you're like, hey man, I'm gonna make you drink the whiskey that won the world's World Whiskey Awards at the best single malt whiskey of the year, and they're gonna drink it and they'll be like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? You know what I mean? So there you have it, man. There you have it. Um, not the best experience, a decent one at best. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I don't want to comment more than I already have. Uh, I have this whiskey. Um, I tasted it. I thought it's okay. Uh, does it deserve to win? Absolutely not. Um, there, I think there are much better whiskeys out there. Uh, but you know, but sometimes, sometimes these awards will be like they give into fascination, and when they give into fascination, actually, you know what? I don't know how awards work. Really, I don't. And I don't put much stock into them either. So, and neither should you. Yeah, I don't have anything more to say. Uh, decent whiskey. I'm gonna give it a six point five C ish, which is not bad. Which is kind of kind of average, -ish, slightly eh, kind of average. -ish. Yeah, I, it is. It is an average whiskey, uh, but it's definitely one that will. Um, uh, that if you put on the table in front of your friends who've not, never tried it before, uh, it, it certainly there's an intrigue factor to it. Uh, people will be like fascinated, like, who an Israeli whiskey, I've never had that before. And I think just for that alone, it's 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 worth a purchase. But, you know, uh, manage their expectations. Be like, hey man, this won the world, world's best whiskey ever in the whole world ever. Um, uh, but take that with a grain of salt, uh, in my opinion. So there you have it, man. There you have it. Thank you. Thank you for being here and uh, and um, sticking around, um, uh, even though we took some time off to recalibrate and, and you know, um, assess our life goals. Um, but I'm, I'm glad you're still here and watching these videos and thank you so much and uh, all the good stuff and I love you guys and uh, that's it. I'm the Mod Activist, until next time.